Alrighty then, so, after many hardships, I finally was able to remove everything off of the junkyard axle assembly. You will need to remove that cap, just take a flathead and just tap it around to pop it off. This socket is a 32 millimeter socket, okay? You don't need to pay much a big socket like I got, as you can see it's a 32, to go and pop this off. Some of them might have this indentation. Let me unscrew this so I can show you. Yeah. Alright, so you see the little notch right there? Basically what they usually do is they tap and notch this right in there or wherever this bolt basically stops because it gets torqued in like a hundred some foot pounds. I gotta look at the book. And so what they do is to keep this from loosening since this is where the wheel bearing would have been is they would basically notch this into that so you would pretty much have to take a flathead and not uh basically tap and push this out so that you can unscrew this all right um here and here this is where the caliper pretty much went like this like so you have these two bolts the two bolts here are 14s okay you basically access them from the back all right and then here, this nice little hole, which I don't need, is pretty much the ABS brake sensor. Uh, the sensor is pretty much disintegrated. It was all seized up inside the socket, so I had to break it. Um, but yeah, here's the the bearing. This screw did not want to come out. They're famous for not wanting to come out, so I just beat this crap out of it. And then that's the bearing. And then this basically sits right over top of that. Um, another good thing to do is to clean your brake dust shield basically that way uh, air flows better and when you brake you don't have to worry about accumulation of brake dust and uh, dirty wheels but yeah so since I'm replacing both the hub and the bearing and the rotor I said screw it I'll just basically tap it off and beat it with a hammer um, as this came from a junkyard and I don't have time to drill and tap that screw out um, but yeah, I got all the control arms off. I left the bolts in there like I always do, even though we have the bolts and stuff up here, which are way cleaner, which I'll probably would be doing is be using these bolts opposed to these bolts because these have so much rust on them. It's ridiculous. Um, and once again, this came up with 2002, and this is from my 2000. So that says a lot, you know, as far as, you know, the owners taking care of their cars or basically just the weather conditions or where they're located like maybe this the car from 2002 was from wisconsin and this has a bunch of rust it's been a while i don't remember but that's what it looks like to me is that there's a bunch of surface rust all over the parts and then once again i'm replacing these calipers i don't like reusing old calipers i'm someone who likes to buy new stuff and at least know on my conscience that everything has been replaced that needs to be replaced as this is going to be you know pretty much rebuilt engine suspension and so forth so the next step um, after you do that is before you take off the caliper there's a bracket here which you move the e-brake cable I'll show you basically where this 14 is right here you see that bracket it sits just like well, the other way it'll sit like that basically right over top and then this brake line, e-brake line, you just basically unhook it once there's no tension, unhook it, move it out of the way, take an impact or 14 millimeter drive, half inch, whatever, and just pop it off. And then you can take this bracket up because you will need this for the five lug conversion. Um, when you go to put your new caliper on, you know, hopefully that'll help you out. But yeah, all this is just basically going to scrap because um, everything has to be brand new. All right, next step, I would now be assembling, oops, spider. Now be assembling uh, a new wear bearing, as you will see soon. You'll see the new bearing and hub, the new rotor. I'll put the caliper on. Um, I'm sketchy, I might do it after, just because I don't want to bend the shield. So I'll probably just start putting on the new arms, and we're gonna wait for this, but at least have the arm in there until the bolts you know, come in. And these shocks look pretty good until I can afford coilovers. But yeah, let's All get right, to it. So, 
after a long process, uh, we have control arms on. I already adjusted these. What I did was I took the old, get it. I took the old one and I lined it up basically. I would put the bolt through the hole and I'd match it with that one with the bolt in the hole. And I would basically just adjust the new one, the new aftermarket camera kit with the stock camber kit, okay? Or the stock controlling basically. So that way when it goes to get alignment, all they had to do is basically make the necessary adjustments as needed. But at least right now it's at factory length. Um, that way there's no surprises. Ooh, that wind's picking up. So it'd be a lot easier. Another thing is use the wear bearing. I already have the castle nut on or the axle nut. I uh, basically torqued it down, used the impact with the, I think it's a 32, use a 32 millimeter socket, and then as you can see I notched it right there. Um, same thing with this, I still have to tighten, uh, tighten these down, but I actually took both of the old arms, butted them up next to each other, and I went ahead and basically made them the same length as the original ones. Same thing with this arm. So as you can see, this camera kit and these just uh, lower control arm and this other control arm are adjustable. Um, these two are Moog. This one's SPC, but I think SPC was sold out to Moog. So they're all Moog control arms. This one is Beckon Arnley, and this one's also Beckon Arnley. This is the trailing arm right here where the e-brake would bolt up. So that's all the old parts right here that I said I was gonna take off and replace. You might need this special tool right here this tool basically what it does is it compresses around the inner race of the bearing which is basically this when you take off the bearing what's going to happen is sometimes these inner outer races right here see how it's coming out will get seized up on this shaft right here and when you try to put the new one on you can't because the outer the inner race is seized up on the shaft so what you would use is this you put it around you tighten both sides and what it does is it basically clamps and you see that ridge it basically pushes their inner race out and then you'd use this kit right here um, and you'd use this kit to bolt here the two bolts and then the metal rod right here with a 19 millimeter socket pushes against this pull in the inner racing or pulls this which is pulling the race which is what I had to do in my situation. Um, another reason why I wanted to put new parts on the car, because I don't trust it. And since that was seized up, that means that the bearing was probably completely shot. Um, yes, this is ABS. No, I'm not running it. Um, but yeah, it no clicks, spins really nicely. I have the cap that goes here. I was cleaning it up. Here it is. Just clean it up as best as I could, because. You're going to gently tap it up there, like so. Another thing. Let's see. I still got a spot right there. That'll do it. As long as it's up there and nothing gets in. But basically this cap is what's going to keep everything inside good to go. Um, other than that, we're going to be ready to put the caliper on. There is no spindle because the spindle is... Actually, there was a separate independent spindle lied. There's a separate spindle that we're going to bolt on with the 214s that I was talking about earlier. It'll go like so basically and it'll bolt these two right here to this and then we can go ahead and put a new caliper on and new brake pads after we put the new rotor on i have special screws for my rotors honda supplies them a lot of rotor uh replacement rotors do not come with the hot screws they're phillips screws which is one of the reasons why that rotor is basically seized up on that hub um it's 
there was just two rusted up there. Uh, so basically, I have new ones, and what they do is they keep that rotor on perfectly onto the hub. So when you're, you're driving, basically, you don't have the rotor basically wobbling, you know, left, right, up and down, etc., and causing chapping in the brake pads, and then the whole back wheel. Same thing with the front wheels, okay, it could happen, where the whole car feels like it's shaking. Uh, and a lot of people mistake it, but Honda, that I know of in Acura, they have these special screws. Uh, depending on which model, Honda and Acura, Toyota, etc., these screws help keep the rotors, you know, nice and flush against the hub. That way, when you're driving, there is no play, there is no uh, wobbling as you're driving. So now we're gonna go and proceed to the next step, and that is mounting the brakes. So, I tightened these with a pimp wrench, uh, pipe wrench, basically, not a pip wrench, haha. <laughs> tighten this one down, tighten this one down, tighten this one because I wanted to make sure everything was good to go. I don't like how these new ones are. These are supposed to basically lock in flush with that little flat surface inside the caliper right there, just like this one. So I used vice grips to basically hold them in place so I can tighten as much as I can because they keep spinning as you're tightening. Next thing, take this e-brake cable, you hook it in, bam, done. So what happens is when this cable, when you pull the e-brake basically, it puts tension and it pulls this and it'll lock these caliper, uh, calipers up, these rear ones basically. These are the two screws I was talking about earlier. It keeps the rotor from basically moving in and out. I'm aware that my lug nuts look like shit, but these are the lug nuts that basically will hold my Brand new tire wheels, Acura TL, on the car, for now. I have to order uh, new lug nuts from the dealership because the ones that uh, Advanced Auto are pretty much aftermarket and they're like aluminum and these are like a little bit more durable to me. And I want the ones without these little plastic washers which are meant for like steelies with hubcaps and I'm not running hubcaps. Finished tightening this upper camber arm. Uh, I gotta tighten these which would be kind of interesting and in how to tighten these. So I gotta figure that one out. I could probably do this one easily. This one, I don't know how I would be able to reach it per se, but I'm gonna try my best to maybe get it, I guess, cockeyed somehow. Um, E-brake line is tight now. This is tightened for the trailing arm. We got the cutter pin. We got that sucker on. That's apparently was an 18 out of 17, like the factory castle nut, so. Of course, aftermarket parts, you will have slightly bigger, smaller hardware to go with those parts. So be aware of that. So now we're about to go as the next, I want to say last and final, because I still have to wait for these to come in. But I'm going to pretty much be doing the same thing on the other side. Um, it's pretty much the same way we just took this one apart and put it back together. But I'm about to put the last thing on, which is the brake line. It's going to go from here and I guess somehow loop through and connect to here. Um, and I'll show you how to do that um, once I put it on and we would do the other side and then we can do the rear sway bar for when it looks like it'll bolt to these two bolt holes and bolt here and swing around and come over here and basically I'm trying to figure out there it is and it basically it bolts to this end link which bolts to this bracket so basically it's going to go from here and swing all the way to here with the end link which I'm excited for because once again I've driven this car and never had a sway bar so it'd probably be a significant difference in handling and the camera kit you know making a big change as far as the handling and these disc brakes because I hate drums so bad unless it's on a truck that's a different ex you know that's because they, have, they use the drum shoes for, as an e-brake and have rotors it's pretty cool but also Make sure that this dust shield is clear. You do not want it rubbing and finding out the hardware that, hey, why is this weird 
rubbing noise going on. So just make sure that the shield a is not bent, and if it is, bend it back in place. And B, go ahead and make sure that when you spin this, it's not making a weird rubbing noise. Now that noise that you heard, that is because of the brake pads rubbing on this rotor. Another thing you might ask is, why are, why didn't she go and clean the rotors? Well, stop tech, I think it's stop tech. Oh, it's power stop, I'm sorry. Power stop has a coating up here that you do not have to clean off. This coating here and here basically allows it so that there's no rust, no corrosion, which is something I should have done with the front rotors, which was by power stop brakes, well, rotors. But the pads are awesome. Um, yeah, they're not Hawk pads, but they're, they're good for daily driving. But these rotors here are gonna wear out right here. And then here, it's, it's gonna be left alone. So it's gonna have a coating up here, a coating here, and a coating here. And it's gonna last for so long. I love the brand. I love these particular rotors uh, because, well, they don't rust and I don't have to see ugly, you know, rusted rotors in my car. But let's get back to work. Let me go finish putting this brake line on and then we can hop onto the other side. Another thing I'm not doing right now is bleeding these brakes because I have the other side already undone and if I bleed the brakes, I'm gonna have air in my lines, which I probably already do, but that's just part of life. All right, All right so got my 12. Make sure there are two crush washers. They should come with the caliper basically. If not, then try to reuse the old ones, which will look like that right here. But I don't suggest reusing crush washers because as the name suggests, they crush and they seat to the new flat surface. Make sure this is tightened, like hand tightened, I guess. So if you're, you know, want to make everything torque spec you could torque it down I don't have the specs on hands I've been doing this for some while I just you know you get that little clickiness in your wrist but I just basically snugged it <laughs> loop it down okay there should be a bolt a 12 millimeter bolt right there you bolt it through that little bracket and then you get your little 10 millimeter pipe wrench you put this through it's gonna have like a half moon and a flat surface you want to line it up with this bracket first before you tie in to put that clip and you want to make sure that this as you can see is flush through the hole it's a weird looking hole basically it's just like the one here that I showed earlier yeah it only goes one way it will not go through and be flush if if it's not in properly you put that through you push this clip in this clip and secures this line and then you basically hand tie in that uh, 10 millimeter uh, pipe wrench uh, bolt basically you have to snug it and make sure it's snug okay um, if not it'll start leaking it'll leak from here or it'll leak from here basically also be careful when you twist these rubber hoses they tend to fatigue um, that's another reason why I bought new ones but as you can see there's a lot of play and there's a lot of play in that one too uh, the only thing that's holding me up on this so far is to bleed the brakes Hold the e-brake line, which is over here, okay? And to wait for the new special order bolts to come in for the alignment for this rear lower control arm. Uh, besides that, that's pretty much it on how to do a five lug disc brake conversion. Pretty simple. Uh, I went a little bit extra by getting the adjustable lower control arms in this upper camera kit. It's just something I like to do because from factory back in well, 20 years ago, they didn't have such a thing only the high-end cars have you know the suspension uh to this basically adjustable um but i was fortunate that they have an aftermarket platform for this especially mooc which as the name suggests they're problem solvers well that is it folks um i would do a just trial run basically or a time lapse of the other side for those who want to watch that too uh but it's pretty much the same idea what you do on the passenger rear you do on the dri uh, driver rear uh, I've got a lot of new parts not many people you know need all those new parts but hopefully this helps answer a lot of questions and that'll be it